In this video, I will show you how to create the application layout that will be used by the different pages of your Spring Boot application. And we will use Time Leaf. First, let's create a new project. So we can type Spring Initializer. Let's go to the first link. So here, let's select Maven. Let's select the latest version of Spring Boot. For the group, let's say com.bmt, for example. And let's call this application my store. Then let's add the dependencies. So first we need Spring Web. Then we need Time Leaf. And finally we can add Dev Tools, which is optional. Then let's download the application. So I will save it on the desktop. Now let's extract this zip file and let's open it using an IDE. I will open it using Eclipse. Now let's create a new controller. So let's add a new class. And let's add it in the controllers package. Let's call it home controller. And let's add the controller annotation. Then let's create the root endpoint. So when we send a request to the root URL using the get method, we will execute the index method and we will return the page index.html. So now we need to create this page. But first, let's add the required package. Then let's create the page index.html and we need to create it in the templates folder. So I will create this page using Bootstrap. So let's go to the documentation website of Bootstrap. Let's go to the first link, then docs. And let's copy this source code that includes Bootstrap, CSS and JavaScript from the CDN. Let's paste it here. Let's change the title of the window. So here we can write my store, for example. Then let's delete this h1 element. And let's replace it with this container that contains this h1 element that will be displayed in the center of the page. So here we can write welcome to our website. Let's save all the files. And let's run the application. So we can go to the main file, we can make a right click, then run as then Java application. So now the application is running correctly and it is available at this port number. Let's go to the browser and here let's write localhost column 8080. And we obtain this page. So now let's add the navbar and let's add the footer. So to add the navbar, we can go back to the documentation website of Bootstrap and under components, let's click on navbar. Then let's copy the source code that allows us to obtain this navbar. And let's add it after the body. Let's change the name of the application. So here we can write my store. And let's change the URL, so it will be the root URL. Then let's add a bottom border to the navbar. So just here, we can add the bootstrap class border bottom. And then we can use a container instead of container fluid to add some space at the left and at the right. So here we can see that we have the home item. Let's skip it, but let's delete this attribute. We don't need it. Let's change the href. So here it will be the root URL and we can change the classes. So let's delete the active class and let's replace it with text dark. Then we have this item. So let's change the text. So here we can write contact, for example. Let's change the URL. So it will be slash contact. And let's add text dark 
to the class. We can add another item for the privacy page. So let's copy this item and let's paste it here. Let's change the text. So let's write privacy. Let's change the URL. Then let's delete this item. So let's delete this li element. Let's delete this item as well. And let's delete this form. Let's save the file. And let's refresh the page. And here we can see that we have this navbar. Now let's add the footer. So after this div that contains the title of the application, we can create the footer. So in this footer, we will add a top border. And then we have this div, which is a bootstrap container, where we will display the copyright. And then we will display the current year. So we can call dates that allow us to display the date. And we will display only the year. And here we have the name of the application. Let's save the file. And let's refresh the page. And we obtain this footer. Now we need the navbar and the footer to be shared between all the pages of the application. So we can move them in a different file. So let's create a new file under templates. And we can call it layout.html for example. Now let's copy the source code from the index page. So we can copy all the file. Let's paste it here. So we need to share the head element, the nav element, and the footer element. So let's provide the head with a name. So we can add th fragment attribute and the value will be page head, for example. Here we can see that we have a warning, so this is not an error. But to get rid of this warning, we can add another attribute in the HTML element. So just here we can add the following attribute. And here we can see that we don't have the warning anymore. Also, we need to provide the nav element with a name. So just here. We can add th fragment attribute and we can call it page navbar, for example. Let's delete this div, we don't need it. And let's provide a name to the footer element. And we can call it page footer. So now we can use the shared elements in the other pages. So let's go back to the index page. Let's delete the content of the head element. And let's use the shared head element. So just here in the open tag. We can add th replace and we will replace this head element with the head element having the name page head that is defined in the layout file. So here we have this warning to get rid of this we can add the time leaf attribute in the HTML element. So page head that we have here is this page head. So we will replace this head element with the content of this head element. Now let's do the same thing with this nav element. So let's delete the content of this nav element. So we can also delete the attributes. Then let's delete the content. And you can replace the content of this nav element with the content of the nav element having the name uh, page nav bar that is defined in the layout file. Then let's do the same thing with the footer. So let's delete the attributes. Then let's delete the content. Then let's add th replace and we will replace the content of this footer with the content of the footer having the name page footer of the layout file. We can also update the text of this h1 element. So here we can write welcome to our new website. Let's save all the files. And let's refresh the page. And here we can see that we are using the navbar and the footer that are defined in the layout file. Now let's create the contact page and the privacy page. 
So first let's go to home controller. And then let's define two additional routes. So we can create the route slash contact that is accessible using the get method and the route slash privacy that is also accessible using the get method. So when we send a request to slash contact, we will display the contact page. And when we send a request to slash privacy, we will display the privacy page. So now let's create the files contact.html and privacy.html. Let's create them in the templates folder. So for the file contact.html, we can copy the source code of the index page. So we can copy this. Then let's change the text of the h1 element. So here we can write contact us, for example. Let's create the privacy page. And here we can write privacy. Now let's save all the files. Let's go to the contact page. So here we have slash contact and this is the contact page. Let's go to the privacy page. So here we can see that all the pages are sharing the navbar and the footer.